Rob here at eTrailer.com and today you're going to be taking a look at the eTrailer Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2014 Chrysler Town & Country. Now having a trailer hitch receiver can help you out a lot. Maybe we need to make room inside of our van, put a cargo carrier back here, we can move all that gear to the outside. Or if we need to tow a trailer, we can put a ball mount in here and make it a lot easier to move that gear rather than trying to cram everything into the inside. Or if we want to take a small day trip, take some bikes with us, we could put a bike rack in there. But regardless of what accessories we're going to be using, all of those accessories are going to mount to the hitch pin hole here on the side. And our hitch is going to accept a standard 5 8 pin and clip. Now these are not included with the hitch, but you can pick them up here at eTrailer.com, along with some locking devices to make sure your accessories are nice and secure. And if you are going to be towing a trailer, our safety chain connection points are going to be pretty open. It'll be a loop style welded to the bottom of the receiver tube. And you can see we have plenty of room to get the hooks on or off. And then the fact that the hitch pin hole is slightly offset from the loop means we're going to have less chance of interference with our pin and clip and the safety chains. Now regardless if you're going to be using it for recreational purposes like that bike rack or cargo carrier or if you are going to be towing a trailer, you want to make sure that your hitch is going to be up to the task that you put it to. So as far as the weight rating goes, our hitch is going to have a 400 pound tongue weight. That's going to be the maximum downward force at the end of the receiver tube. And to put it in perspective, that's going to be a pretty good amount. We're going to be able to use most of the carrying capacity of those really large cargo carriers or be able to carry a lot of bikes with us, some of those bike racks that can go up to four or five bikes. Now the gross trailer weight rating on our hitch is going to be 4,000 pounds. That's how much it can pull, but that does include the trailer and everything we have loaded on it. Now it is designed to work with weight distribution systems as well, and that's going to be a separate component that's mounted on your trailer. So that's going to bump the tongue weight up to 500 pounds and the gross trailer weight rating up to 5,000 pounds. But that is what the hitch is rated at, so you want to double check your owner's manual and not exceed the manufacturer's rating. I'd like to give you a few measurements and these are going to help you out when you're looking for accessories for your new hitch. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of our bumper is going to be right about four and a half inches. Now that measurement is going to come in handy when you're looking at folding accessories to make sure you have adequate room and they're not going to come in contact with the rear bumper. From the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening, it's right about 12 and a half inches. Now at that height, I would definitely recommend a bike rack or a cargo carrier that has a raised shank. That way we get a little bit more ground clearance out of it. But that measurement is also going to help you when you're looking for a ball mount so you can find the appropriate riser drop to match up to your trailer. Now that we've seen what our hitch looks like and gone over some of the features, let's get it installed together. To begin our installation, we want to come to the back of our town and country and on the passenger side, we're going to find our muffler. Now we need to drop this down so we have a little bit more room above the muffler on the frame rail there. So if we've come to the back of the muffler and we look up at the frame rail, we're going to find our hanger and it will be bolted to the bottom of the frame right here. We want to grab a 13 millimeter socket and an extension will help you reach it and we'll pull that bolt out so our exhaust can come down. Once we have this bolt removed, you'll notice that the exhaust isn't going to come down as much as we really want it to. So I'm going to follow this pipe back and right behind the rear axle towards the front of the car here, we'll have another hanger and another bolt just like it holding it in place. So we'll take that same 13 millimeter socket and pull it out. That'll give us a little bit more room so we can actually pull down on the muffler, but it's not gonna come down too far to cause any damage. Now we're over here on the driver's side frame rail. We're gonna have three bolts on the bottom. I wanna pull all three of those out. So the one towards the very back of the bumper here, we're gonna use a 15 millimeter socket. Now if your bolts don't wanna come out, you don't wanna force them coming out using an impact. I went ahead and sprayed my bolts down I'm going to come back with a hand ratchet and a 15 millimeter socket and slowly loosen the bolt because there's a weld nut inside the frame and we don't want the bolt to break off. Then we're going to remove the two bolts that are moving forward on the frame rail using an 18 millimeter socket. 
And again, if they don't want to come out, I do suggest using a hand ratchet to break them loose. But if they do come out, you don't have to worry about it. And we'll go over to the other side and repeat the same process, except we're only going to be removing the furthest back one and the next one. We want to leave that third bolt the furthest forward on the passenger side. Now with the next set of hands, we're going to lift our hitch up. We're going to go over the exhaust on the passenger side, and then we'll line up the holes in our side plates with the holes in the weld nuts in the frame. And you want to get at least one bolt just hand tight, just so the hitch will support itself. And we can work on putting all the hardware back in place. Once you have all your hardware in, we'll come back with those same two sockets and tighten it all up. I'm gonna come back with the torque wrench and I'm gonna torque all my hardware down to the specified amount in the instructions. You do wanna make sure you go back and repeat that for all your remaining hardware. Once we have our hitch in place, we'll lift our exhaust back up and we'll replace the two bolts that were holding the hangers to the frame. But once you have that last bolt in, that'll finish up your installation and your look at the E-Trailer Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2014 Chrysler Town & Country.